Okay, so we have all our asymptotes. Our next step is we got our intercepts, we got our asymptotes. Our next step are to find our extrema. Now, to get those, we basically need a first derivative, and then we need points of inflection by doing the second derivative. So let's find the first derivative. We're working after the first derivative now. So this is going to be fun. For the first derivative, it's a quotient rule. Derive that. So you have 3x squared. Leave the x squared minus 4. Minus, leave the x cubed. Derive the second piece, which is just 2x. All that goes over x squared minus 4 squared. Now, real quick, to make this a little bit easier, is there any GCF I can yank out? Before I distribute everything, is there a GCF I can yank out? Isn't there an x squared in both of these? Actually, let's just distribute it. Never mind. Probably easier. You get 3x to the fourth minus 4 minus 12 x squared and this becomes minus 2x to the fourth over x squared minus 4 squared so you now have your first oops your first derivative looks like it's going to be x to the fourth minus 12 x squared over x squared minus 4 <coughs> squared. Why do we get that? We're now going to set this equal to zero, find the critical numbers. We're then going to take this, find the second derivative of it, to find points of inflections possibly. So to do this, we're going to set this equal to zero. So basically, we're going to set x squared minus 12x, sorry, x to the fourth minus 12x squared equal to zero. And we're going to set x squared minus 4 squared equal to zero. By doing that, hopefully you notice here you can pull the x squared out leaving you x squared minus 12. So, looking at this, can you tell for this one, what are your answers? Well, that one right there is going to be 0, correct? And this one's going to be plus or minus square root 12. Don't worry about simplifying that for now. What's this one going to be? x equals plus or minus 2. Now, are those already vertical asymptotes? So are these critical numbers? No, but are they still important to put on my table? Yes, because at asymptotes, can characteristics of your graph change? Yes. These are not critical numbers, but they're still important for us in what we're going to get into. So there we go. Can you see a lot of intervals here? Okay. I now want to find my second derivative of this. So I'm going to take this and get my second derivative. Okay, here we go. This is going to be fun. And I'm going to run out of space. Okay, deriving this top right here, we have 4x cubed minus uh, 24x and then rewrite the bottom then we have minus leave the top and then derive the bottom oh crud I'm running out of space really quick um, that's going to be a chain rule. 
So you have 2, x squared minus 4, and then you also have a 2x. Just ran out of space. OK. Because um, you have to derive the inside. And all of that is over x squared minus 4 to the fourth, because you're squaring. OK. Next, that looks really ugly. Before we do that, are there x to the fourth in both of these? Could I pull out GCFs? Let's pull out any kind of GCF we possibly can see here. What GCF do you see? I see x squared minus 4. Anything else? I also see a 4x. So when we pull out x squared minus 4 and a 4x, when you pull a 4x out of this, what do you get? You get x squared minus 6. Do you still have an x squared minus 4? You still got your x squared minus 4. And then here, you have an, you probably could have took out more. You have an x to the fourth minus 12x squared. And all that came out. Since I'm running out of space here, um, do you understand I set the whole top equal to zero and the whole bottom equal to zero? Do I need to set the bottom equal to zero? No, aren't those asymptotes already? Can I ignore that? I'm going to ignore the bottom. We took care of it here. The top, did I, do I need to set that equal to zero? No, it's the same as the bottom. Won't it actually cancel? Won't this actually go here and cancel with this, making a third power? Okay, do I need to set 4x equal to 0? Yeah, but look at it. When I set 4x equal to 0, don't you get 0? Isn't that taken care of already? Okay, so this is a possible point of inflection. It's already taken care of. Now, when you set this nasty piece right here equal to 0, okay, that's going to get a little ugly. But what you end up with when you simplify all of this down, I would just tell you because we're really running out of space in order to do this, is um, you end up with nothing. You end up with this ends up being something that you cannot mess with um, according to what I'm looking at. And um, so the top, basically the top ends up looking like this, I'll just tell you. The top ends up being 8x, x squared plus 12. If you, if you condense the whole top down, you get this. If you condense the whole top down, this whole piece right here, you get this. The 8x kind of relates to the 4x, so that's 0. And this, whenever you have a squared equal of plus 12, it's going to be impossible. So this is the only one you can deal with. Kind of all that work for no reason. Anyways, I don't have space to show you all that simplification, but this whole top would simplify down to here.